Hello and welcome to another edition of the book review blog. I am your book reviewer. I know it's been a little bit since I've reviewed. Um, let me tell you, I don't um, reveal a lot about my personal life on these things, but let me introduce myself again and um, tell you a little bit of what's been happening with me in the last about six weeks. Um, I got married. And uh, even though this is my show's right hand, this is like my left hand. Uh, thanks, Macintosh um, iMovie computer, which does things backwards. Anyway, um, so yay, I have a new name, which is all exciting. Uh, it's been about six weeks, as I said. It's been wonderful. So, um, yay. And so let's get to our book review, shall we? Um, this Today we're going to review the book, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I really hope I got his name right. Um, a lot of you may know that this is, was also a movie that was done maybe a year and a half ago or like t almost maybe even like three years ago. Um, wow, how time flies. Um, <laughs> I saw the movie and r was really interested in reading the book and luckily my sister had it so I borrowed it from her and um, let's get on with it. Um, the main character in this book is a boy named Charlie and this book is one of those books that um, does it in letters. He, the book, like, and he addresses, I don't know if you can see it, he addresses his letters to a friend. It doesn't say his, it, the friend is not named at all, um, but, and it's almost kind of like a diary, I guess kind of like, um, the Diary of Anne Frank, I, I really hate to compare that, but he talks, he writes to this friend um, maybe once a week, maybe, and then like there are times when he doesn't write for a while and he explains why he doesn't write. Anyway, um, he starts, when the book starts, Charlie is about to enter uh, high school, even though he is already 15 years old. And he it's basically um, kind of a coming of age thing with him starting with high school. How he is just really nervous about it, and he's just a really quiet guy, and he doesn't know a lot of people again because it's high school. And he does have a sister who goes to the same high school, but she's, I believe, a senior, and so she like ignores him, um, as you kind of would imagine, um, siblings of senior and freshman. Um, he has another, he has a brother who, um, in, attends Penn State, so this book is, um, based in Pennsylvania, and, um, they do, he does have a mother and a father, and he talks about an aunt, Helen, that he had who died, and so that's kind of the main family characters that he talks about throughout this book. Um, he, when he is in high school, he meets a man named Patrick, who, um, in his shop class, and, um, he has a really big bond with him, he notices, and, um, and he met, he meets, um, a woman who hangs out with Patrick a lot, who, he, uh, Charlie first, her name is Sam, and Charlie first thinks that they're dating, but um, Patrick's like, no, 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 no. Sam is my stepsister. And so that's kind of good for Charlie because he thinks that Sam is attractive. So, and it turns out that Patrick is um, homosexual. And um, so, and Patrick tells Charlie that he is secretly dating um, a member of the football team of his high school, but this guy that he's dating has not come out yet to say that he's homosexual, and I'm sorry, it gets, keeps getting really dark, um, and he has not, uh, again, come out to his parents, he's not come out to his friends, so he really wants to keep it on the down low. I believe this guy's name is Brad, um, if I remember correctly, and, um, but with, through Patrick and Charlie, uh, or through Patrick and Sam, excuse me, Charlie meets a lot of other friends, and they all kind of form a club. Um, unfortunately, the majority, if not all of these people, are seniors, so the majority of them will be leaving at the end of the year, um, which 
makes Charlie sad because this um, this group of friends is kind of the only friends that he's made in high school, and like he's closer to them than he has ever been to any of his friends. And also, through the year and through this writing, you learn that um, Charlie had a friend in middle school who committed suicide. And so, again, and with his um, nervousness and with the attitude that he has for high school and just high school being kind of a um, bad place anyway in kind of the literary world, and with his Aunt Helen dying and with um, his friend in middle school who died, this book is very depressing, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, um, but... It was, it's still pretty good. Um, throughout, again, throughout the year, it takes place um, over the year of his freshman year. And um, he doesn't end up dating Sam. Uh, he ends up dating um, a, a woman who I believe is named Mary Beth, um, or at least Mary, and, or Mary Elizabeth, I think is her name. And um, she's part of the whole group, um, but she's very... She's very talkative, and she's kind of very demanding of Charlie, uh, which is really funny because the group um, uh, calls Cherry or calls Charlie a wallflower uh, because he doesn't say much, and they're like, "Oh, you're just a wallflower," and and they find that fun, and so um, and it's actually um, I believe like a Christmas party or a New Year's party that the the group is playing Truth or Dare. And this is where, again, Charlie is dating Mary Elizabeth. And uh, Patrick is the one who is doing, or is, um, it's Charlie's turn. And Patrick is giving him a truth or dare. And he ends up, and Charlie picks dare. And Patrick says, um, I dare you to kiss the prettiest girl in the room. And, of course, everybody knows that Charlie is dating Mary Elizabeth. And so everybody assumes that he's going to kiss Mary Elizabeth. But um, Charlie ends up kissing Sam, which makes Mary Elizabeth ups very upset and makes Sam upset and makes everybody else in the room feel very awkward. Um, but regardless of, um, of that happening, Mary Beth breaks off the relationship. Like, you know, we can't date each other. Sam has stopped talking to Charlie and so has kind of Patrick and everybody else. Um, and so that causes Patrick or that causes Charlie to be in a severe depression. Um, again, because along with the Christmas season, um, and along with the parties, he is thinking more and more of his aunt Helen because, um, Char they do celebrate Charlie's birthday. Charlie's Charlie was born on Christmas Eve, and it just happened that that was the day that his aunt Helen died, and it happened that she was going, she was telling him that she was going to go out and buy him a birthday present, and she ended up dying in a car accident. So he had always had a very special bond with his aunt Helen, and so that's why. Every year, uh, Christmas has always been very bad for him every year because he remembers that this was the day that my Aunt Helen died. And so um, I don't think his group of friends knew that. Maybe Sam did. But um, again, with the truth or dare thing, it didn't, um, that never came up as an issue. So anyway, it, the, um, the new year begins and maybe a, a month or so of like nobody talking to him and you know it kind of goes around like for a month or so and then Char and then um, Patrick ends up confronting the um, guy Brad, the football player who ended up breaking up with him um, earlier in the school year and he confronted Patrick confronted Brad in the lunchroom. And Brad, of course, took it very badly because, again, he didn't know, nobody knew that Brad was gay. And so Brad and Patrick get into a fist fight. And Charlene witnesses this and comes 
automatically to Patrick's aid, and he, and you really see that um, Charlie, like everything, kind of blacked out for Charlie according to his letter, but. Um, you see that Charlie really stood up for Patrick and really um, caused Patrick to admire him and, again, caused Sam to admire him because Sam was there as well. And so it, it didn't exactly go back to normal is what I would say with their friendship, but it became he, Charlie and Sam started talking again. And so, again, the year progresses and where it's to the end of the year. And Sam has been accepted to college. Um, I believe it's Yale. Um, it's an Ivy League school, but I don't remember where. Anyway, um, and Charlie is pack is helping her pack up to leave because she is on um, like a summer program where she can start right away in the summer. So, and as it as they kind of pack and they talk, they start to kiss and they start to have sex and are kind of like, they're not far at all, but because I believe Sam touches Charlie like near his inner thigh or something and he all of a sudden like freezes and he all of a sudden becomes very withdrawn and Sam kind of assumes, oh, you're not ready yet. Okay, we'll stop. You're not ready yet. And then Charlie becomes very... Um, again, much more depressed than he's already been and much more, um, like really suicidal. And he, it, it turns out, um, he doesn't tell Sam or Patrick or anything, but it turns out through his letters and kind of through realizations, um, that his aunt Helen had sexually molested Charlie um, on pretty much a weekly basis, uh, she would spend, like, Saturdays with the family, and, um, Aunt Helen was abused herself and carried that abuse to Charlie, unfortunately. Um, and so what ended up happening was Charlie was, because of the incident between him and Sam, um, that kind of, like, awoke, um, repressed feelings and repressed like scary images he was put into a mental hospital for a while and um where he received treatment and again still talking to his friend um and it was just a very good it was a good book again very depressing not what i'm used to um the movie is very much like the book because this Stephen Chbosky guy was part was I think he directed it and I believe he did the screenplay. So again, he had a really big part in this creation. So it's understandable that the book and movie are pretty much and there are changes obviously, but they're pretty linked. So anyway, that's it. Um, my next book that I'm going to review. I had to leave it at the library, unfortunately. It was The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. So that'll be the next book that I'm going to review. And that's all. And I bid you happy reading and a fond farewell.